This is the last lesson in Chapter 6 Logs, and we're actually going to be going back and reviewing exponential models. So we've already covered problems like this, but before we had to use our graphing calculator and we had to graph our function in order to solve, um, you know, and find specific answers. Now we have our background in logs, so now we can solve these exponential models much easier using our technique of logs. So our objective for today is to be given a real world situation and then to use, in this particular case, a, um, an exponential function to model that mathematical um, scenario. So here we've got our population problem. So it says, assume that the population of the United States is increasing exponentially with time. In the 1970 census, uh, we had 200 th 203 million people. In the 1980 census, we had a population that had grown to 225 million. So what we're going to do first is find our particular equation here by expressing population in terms of the number of years that have elapsed since 1970. So that's important. It's since 1970. So we're going to define our variables, we'll write down our ordered pairs, and then we'll find an exponential equation, and we give you the form we want you to put it in, y equals a times b to the x. So let's start off first by defining our variables. Um, it tells us right here, it says population in terms of the number of years. So we can use x and y here, but x is going to be denoted as the number of years since 1970. y will be our population in millions. And we want to use y equals a times b to the x as our general equation. So to find the particular equation, we first want to list our ordered pairs. So we've got two ordered pairs that they gave us in the, the beginning paragraph here, because it says that the 1970 census showed that we had a population of 203 million. So our initial value here, because our 1970 census represents when time is 0 here. So we have 0, and then 203 is our first coordinate. And we have a second coordinate of 10, since 1980 is 10 years after 1970, so we have 10, 225. So based off of these coordinates here, I want to plug that into my general equation here, y equals a times b to the x. So right away, we remember a is our initial value, so we have y equals 203 times b to the x. This is my initial value right here. And after that, I'm simply going to solve for x by plugging in, I'm sorry, solving for my b, by plugging in this xy coordinate pair. So I have 225 is equal to 203 times b to the 10th power. So I want to solve for b. So I'm going to isolate the b by dividing out the 203 first. So I have 225 over 203 equals b to the 10th. Now to solve for b here, we have to raise to the reciprocal power of 1 10th. Or you could also take the 10th root. It doesn't matter, however you want to do it. But I end up with b equaling, oops, b equaling 225 over 203 raised to the 1 10th power. So my general um, equation, which is y equals a times b to the x, now becomes the particular equation, y equals a, which is 203, times my b value, 225 over 203 raised to the 1 10th. And all of that, that b value is raised to the x power. So instead of writing those double parentheses here, I'm going to erase that and write this as 1 tenth times x, like that. Okay? So this is my particular equation. Now, the second question here says to use this equation to predict the population this year. So I'll let you guys do that. Remember, when you're taking into account this year, you have to think about in terms of the years passed since 1970, so go ahead and try this question and then check with the key. But before you even begin that problem, I actually want you to store your b value here, because we're going to use this same b value a lot, and it's so messy that I don't want you to have to type that in every single time. So let's work on storing our b value, okay? Okay, so I entered that uh, calculation here, and now I'm going to store this value, so I just hit stow and then alpha b. And uh, you don't have to, you know, store it as B. It could be anything you want. But I'm just going to keep it consistent since I'm saying B a lot. So um, now that it's stored, when I go to this problem here, um, it's going to be quite easy since this value is stored for me. All I have to do is type into my calculator 203 times B raised to the X value. And this is what you're going to do is figure out what that X input should be. So let's move on now to part 3 here where it says predict the year in which the population will reach 400 million. So in this case, they're giving us the y value here. So they're saying y is equal to 400 
and they want you to find x. So we're going to start with our particular equation, y equals 203 times b to the x. Remember, b is a known value now, and we're going to plug in what we know. We know that y is equal to 400, so I have 400 equals 203 times b to the x. Now I want to solve for x, so what I'm going to do is isolate that x as much as possible. So I'm going to divide out that 203 first, so that I end up with 400 over 203 equals b to the x. Again, b is not a variable though. So if I want to get x alone, um, what I need to do is switch forms here, because this is an exponential equation that I'm stuck in. Um, before, when we did this in chapter 6, exponents, we'd actually have you to try to actually find the answer to this. We'd have you graph this. Remember, we would take this here, and we'd write that in as one equation. So y equals 400 over 203. That would give you a line. That's just a constant. And then here, b to the x, that's another line we'd have you graph, y equals b to the x. But that would give you an exponential function. So we'd be looking for where they, they intersected um, in, a, in our graph. We don't need to do that, though, now that we know how to switch into log form. So this is not a necessary method anymore, because you know more math at this point. So here, we're just going to switch forms and say that this is log base b of my argument 400 over 203 equals x, my exponent. Now, when you plug this into your calculator, this well, this would actually be the exact. So let me hold off a second. This is my exact answer. Since we already know what b is, this value here, this is an exact answer. But I want to answer the question which says predict the year. So in this case, I need to know the um, approximate value for this so that I can you know, factor that into the number of years past 1970. So I'm going to plug this into my calculator. Remember, when you're doing change of base here, because this is not with the base of 10, so we can't input that into our calculator. If you want to um, input something like log base b of a, you can put that in your calculator as log base 10 of a divided by log base 10 of b. Now in this case, our a value is just a little bit more complicated, but that's still just what we're going to put in our numerator. So we have the log of 400 over 203 divided by the log of b. Okay, So that's what I'm going to type right into my calculator. So I take the log of 400. Oops. divided by 203 and you can hit enter here or you can hit divided by I just like to sometimes be safe hit enter and then hit divided by just so I know I have the parentheses in the right spots so divided by log of b so what's nice is we don't have to input that whole b value again I can just do second our uh, alpha b here and I end up with this approximate answer here of 65.9 so x value here is approximately, notice I'm switching the value or the sign here to the approximate symbol. So x is approximately 69 point, uh, wait, what was it? 67.9? No, 65.9, sorry. So 65.9. Now I'm just going to round up to 66 in this case. And so I'm going to take 1970 and add 66. So that means that in the year 2036, uh, the population will reach, so in 2036 the population will reach 400 million. Okay, so that's how you can do that question a little bit easier than having to use your calculator to do the whole graphing thing. Alright, now let's go to part 4 next. So it says, according to your model, what was the population when the Declaration of Independence was signed? Now the first thing I want you to always do in a word problem is identify what variable they're asking you to solve for. So because it says what was the population, this means you know you're asking for the y value, which means we should know what the x is. Now if I read this question, it doesn't really say a year, a specific year, um, and that's because they expect you to know a little bit of history here. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. Now if we just use x equals 1776, we're not really going with the model that we set up. Remember that time x is 0 in 1970. So we need to input 1776 in relationship to 1970. Now this is going to be a negative number of years because it's before 1970 so we're actually going to input negative 194. So we have y equals 203 times b to the negative 194. So this is something that you can directly put right into your calculator. So we type in 203 times our b value, so second b here, alpha b, 
raised to the negative 194. We end up with 27.58. So we have about 27.58 million people. Okay, so that's what we get in our calculator when we use our model. So this would be the exact answer here, and this would be the approximation for that value. Now, in problem five here, it says that the actual population when the Declaration of Independence was signed was, was only four million. So let's explain why our model predicted a much larger population. So we're, we're only getting four million in actual, you know, uh, I guess in the 13 colonies, there were only really four million people, but here we have a model that tells us 27.58 million. Now this goes back to the idea that we studied in first semester with extrapolation and interpolation. So if I had asked you a question about the um, population in like 1975, I'd say our model would be very, very accurate because our data points that we chose were between 1970 and 1980. So anything in between those values would have a very, very accurate um, you know, answer generated from our model. But because we're dealing with something that's so far out you know, before, 19, or 1776 is way before 1970, so we're extrapolating a lot here. It's an extrapolation because we're going way outside of our data set. Interpolation is when you're inside your two data points. So between 1970 and 1980, we'd get pretty accurate results. But because we are using um, a value that's so far out of our given data set, we're extrapolating information so it's not as accurate. So extrapolation um, is not very accurate. Okay? Um, and that pretty much is the end of the lesson with a little bit of review for you guys on those two terms. All right, nice job. I'll see you guys in class tomorrow.